Um, <laughs> How was practice today? Oh, thank you for asking, Kareth. Uh, practice was really good. Uh, we didn't have a full scrimmage, but we did some controlled stuff, uh, kind of late game execution. Um, went over some uh, defensive concepts and uh, team defensive drills. We got some shooting in. Uh, so really good, good day's work. It's nice to have a couple of days here, you know, following a day off, um, you know, before our next game. It gives us a chance to to work on some things. To what degree is Steph involved with things right now? He's not involved with any of that, uh, but he is on the court now uh, getting some shots up. And um, so he's been able to ramp things up a little bit and he's he's doing well. The past three games have seemed to be the, the momentum builders and building blocks, starting with that Phoenix game. You guys said that's when you kind of turn the corner, build against the Jazz, build against the Kings. As you head into the final three games of the regular season, what are the the big goals for you guys? Well, the first goal is to secure home court advantage. So we need one more win uh, for that. Um, that's the tangible goal. Uh, the intangibles are, you know, uh, playing with energy and, and um, maintaining a defensive presence and, and force um, that um, maybe wasn't there for a lot of the Utah game. Um, but um was was pretty good against Phoenix and Sacramento, and so um, just trying to gain some consistency with our our defensive presence over the last few games. Do you feel like the flip has been switched for Draymond, and that he's kind of back to, you know, being who you know he is? I don't think he's all the way back, but I think he turned a corner for sure. Uh, he looks more energetic, uh, more confident in his movement. Uh, the emotion and the passion is is there, um, in, and it manifests itself in a good way, um, you know, as a leader of our team. So he's he's really heading in a great direction, and uh, you know, with three games left and then another week of practice before our first playoff game, um, I, you know, I think uh, things are really looking up for for Draymond. Health-wise, was everybody that was not on the injury, last injury report ready to go? Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm trying to think who else was on the injury report. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, uh, Andre and Otto will play. Um, tonight, uh, Moses and Cheese and Quindary are all in L.A. for our G League playoff game. And they'll be back. So we should have uh, – you know, the guys who are available will all be here Thursday night. You obviously have that Thursday game before the back-to-back -back in San Antonio and New Orleans, but have you thought at all about resting patterns for that last back-to-back -back series? Um, I haven't talked to Rick about it, um, but there's a, a, a good chance we're going to continue to do the same thing we've been doing. Um, and again, you know, some guys are automatic and some guys are, you know, kind of up for debate. How nice is it to know that in the playoffs there are no back-to-back -back series so that you won't have to at least rest go those guys because of, of that situation? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's huge that there are no back-to-backs in the playoffs. So, um, you know, we'll be able to, uh, to, to plan accordingly and hopefully, knock on wood, you know, keep guys uh, healthy and, and ready to go each night. Um, Moses kind of fell out of the rotation after he injured his shoulder. Um, in the game against Boston, I believe it was. Um, what do you just kind of hope to see out of him in this G League stint, and how can he benefit from playing in a playoff game down there? Uh, I just uh, I love Moses' development all season long. Um, development is never linear, so the fact that he's hasn't been in the rotation uh, is not an indication that his development has uh, in any way stopped it's uh it's all part of it um it's more an indication that we've gotten healthy and so um you know he's uh he, he's been pushed down the ladder a little bit but he's been great all year this is a, a really good opportunity for him to um to to play big minutes in a meaningful game with santa cruz um it's uh it's a no-brainer to, to send him
Steve, you said Dre has kind of amped up his vocality and passion as of late. Is there a direct correlation between how vocal and passionate he is versus uh, with how well he plays on the court? Um, yes, and and the way I would describe it is, I mean, his passion is always there, no matter what. Um, but when when he first came back um, and his body wasn't where he wanted it to be which was inevitable. Um, he just had to get some games under his belt. But those first few games, his passion turned into frustration. And um, once he sort of turned the corner physically, that passion turns into energy and, and a positive play for us and leadership. So we know he's going to be passionate. He's always going to be competitive and emotional, um, but it, it's definitely tied together with um, – how he's feeling and and um, you know how he's playing that emotion turns into a really positive thing for us. We've talked to you so much about injuries this season, and what do you think about the job the medical staff and the training staff has has done? We can't ask them directly, so if you could, I wish that would change because I don't really feel comfortable talking about everybody's medical situation when you know uh, I've mentioned this before, but. One of my favorite NBA quotes was when Doc Rivers was asked about a number of injuries, and he finally said, "You know, Doc is just a nickname, right?" And uh, <laughs> it's true. Like we're we're you know we're we're up in front of the mic to talk about medical stuff, and uh, so I wish you could talk to to Rick, but it's not how it works. So uh, as far as my opinion on on uh, the staff, they've done a, a phenomenal job. We've got a really good uh, line of communication between our coaching staff and the players and the and the training staff. So every single day, um, everybody knows exactly what's happening, and there's a collaboration going on to make sure uh, we're putting the players in the best best position to be healthy and to, to succeed. Well, Rick, in particular, I mean, Draymond said that he went to Cabo with him so they could do two a days. So it's not a you don't work typical hours. Um, why does he? What is his selflessness to kind of go on vacation with somebody and work, you know, uh, untraditional hours in order yeah. for that player to get on the court? Yeah, and it, and it, it's uh, Rick does that, and and um, you know, so do the other members of the training staff. We frequently will send them, you know, on on a road trip, um, you know, with a player. If a player is going to Santa Cruz, for example, we'll we'll send a trainer to Santa Cruz. Um, if it's the summertime and a player needs some individualized attention will send that trainer to the player's home. Um, so that's uh, that's a big part of, of being on our training staff is uh, understanding that, you know, it's not a nine to five office job. Uh, you got to be fluid and and flexible and, and uh, selfless. And, and our whole group is it's uh, we've, we've got a really, really great staff. And I, I know everybody feels um, feels really confident in the in the current setup that we have. Draymond started off kind of slowly in his gathering technicals this season. He was a little behind his usual pace, but he's catching up. It I was like. confident that he would get hot. <laughs> and he's gotten hot the past yeah. three weeks. Yeah. Um, how do you, I mean, he straddles this line almost every year, but how do you as a coach sort of navigate, you know, his yeah. approach to technical fouls and, and how to be careful and all those things? Well, the one thing with Draymond is he's very aware of everything. So he knows exactly how many he can get before he would be suspended for a playoff game. And you can almost bet that every season he's going to go right up to that line and, and then not cross the line. The only thing we do is, uh, you know, occasionally um, tell him how many he has. Um, and then, you know, in a game like the other night in Sacramento, um, I, I can't remember when he got his, his technical. Was it late third? I don't remember either. I just remember you were you and he were talking together. And yeah, yeah. It looked we like you were trying to talk him down. Yeah, yeah. And and you know, I was just telling him, you know, we were losing our momentum a little bit at the time, and um, so there's always a little bit of a a balance. You know, I'm I'm always going to back up Tremont, and uh, he needs to know that I have his back, um, and so I have to communicate that whether it's through him or through the officials or maybe me getting a tech. That's all part of it. And then there are certain times where, you know, I'll remind him that they, you know, the team doesn't need one right now. We're losing our momentum. This would be a good time to, uh, to, 
you know, to to not get a check and to bring the guys together and and he's he's great about listening to that and we hash stuff out and and it seems to work. Looney has not missed a game this season. Three more games. Any thought at least to maybe like giving him a break or no. it's just 82, 82. He wants to play 82. He's going to play 82. I think playing 82 is a huge accomplishment for a player. And um, I think Loon has earned the right to, uh, to finish the season off. And, and uh, you know, it'd be one thing if he were a 40 minute a night guy and he really banged up and it, and if you know, it didn't make sense for him to play, then I would advise him to take a night off. I think we did that with Wiggins last year. He had played every game and then, um, you know, we, we sort of forced him to take a night off and, and he accepted it. But um, playing 82 is a, it's a badge of honor. And uh Considering where Loon has been in his career, missing the first two years of his career with hip surgeries and then the nerve issue a couple seasons ago, um, this is a huge accomplishment, and he he deserves to uh, to feel that that pride that comes with it. Steve, what's been working for Belly of late, and how, can you see him being a real factor in the playoffs? Absolutely, yeah. I think um, rotations matter for Belly. It matters who he's on the floor with. Um, you know, one of the things that happened when when I decided to to start small last week for a couple games and see what that looked like um, is it pushed Loon to the bench and it pushed Belly a uh, you know a rung lower on the ladder and and I think he had two DNPs in that span. And uh, sometimes it takes a, a couple games without a guy. Um, to, to remind everybody, you know, what you're missing. And uh, I think um, even though we appreciated, you know, Belly's value already, those two games, you know, we really lacked offensive flow off the bench. And uh, you've seen what he can do the last couple of nights. He's not just a pick and pop shooter, but he's a playmaker. He's a great post-up player. Uh, he can score or pass from down on the block and he can exploit mismatches and, you um, and I like him with that group, particularly with Andre um, back now. Um, you know, you put him with Andre, with Otto, you know, with Gary, Jordan. It's a, it's a really good lineup. Steve, you've kind of mentioned it throughout the past couple months, just the lack of continuity this year with, you know, Clay comes back, uh, Draymond goes out, Draymond comes back, Steph goes out, uh, and – they probably won't play a prolonged period of time together until the postseason. How much are they really just going to kind of have to go off their history together and what they've known over the last decade to kind of uh, spark up that just that chemistry and get it back quick as the playoffs start? Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's what it's going to take because we don't have any other options. But um, it, it is meaningful that Steph, Draymond, Clay, Andre, uh, Loon, those guys have all been through the battles deep into the playoffs, into the finals. Uh, they've they've been through it together, so that that's really helpful. Uh, leaning on that experience because they will not have had any practice time together, and um, other than maybe eleven minutes or whatever it was against Boston, even that game Andre didn't play. So um, we haven't had you know the four of those guys or the five when you include Loon uh, for a single game all year and. Uh, but that experience will come into play. And how, I guess, exciting as a coach is it to see, be able to implement Jordan Poole with, with a group like that, maybe in a closing lineup or just see them on the floor together because um, they've, they've been on the same roster together but haven't really played. Yeah. You know, that that's um, it's a great option for us to have. Um, definitely would have been nice to, to see that combination a little bit more, but um uh, you know, Jordan has played so well over the last few weeks that he, he's making that a no brainer to, to put that group together. And, and, um, you know, when, when it's playoff time, you just, um, there's, there's not a whole lot of time to, you know, give stuff, um, a look, you know, you, you, it either works or it doesn't, you got to try something new if it doesn't. Uh, but, um, there's a really good chance that that's a lineup that works and that we stay with. So it's exciting to think about. All right, let's go to one on Zoom. Anthony Slater, go ahead. 
Yeah, you said you worked on some late game scenarios today in practice. Uh, so, you know, late games obviously been an issue for you guys recently. I'm just curious, like kind of what you worked on, what you're seeing uh, late game recently. Just on uh, different offensive sets that we're going to run. Um, you know, making sure we're understanding the details within the sets. You know, most sets there's multiple options, so you want to make sure you get through the first option um, if it's not there, and get to your second and third options. Uh, moving the pieces around, you know, with with those sets, um, experimenting a little bit, um, you know, th that's the beauty of having a real practice and some actual time to uh, to work on stuff. You can, you know, you can get a lot of that stuff uh, under your belt and and see it, and and then kind of maybe get some new ideas from there. How much more crucial is that in playoff time, too? I mean, because I feel like the game devolves even quicker into those type of scenarios. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big deal, um, particularly for us because we're not a team uh, that, you know, just hands the ball to, uh, you know, a, a guy like LeBron or Giannis. You know, that, that a lot of teams are, you know, they'll – They've got a a guy who's big and strong enough to to just create whatever. Um, you know, we don't have that. We're going to face a lot of reading. Um, we've got to rely on our skill. Um, we can try to put our best players in advantages uh, to attack, but um, you know, we have to be able to execute a couple things. I think for for us to really get the most out of our talent.